Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to look at Windows Live Movie Maker. Now this is part of the Windows Essential Pack that has come out and they do have another beta coming out for this. I am running Windows Vista and of course this is Windows Vista Enterprise Edition so there's one thing that is missing from this version of Live Movie Maker and that is the DVD burning. Now if you do have uh, Vista and you have home premium or if you have professional you will get the DVD burning and most versions of Windows 7 will also have the DVD burning but let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here you can use it to create still image slideshows if you want with the Ken Burns effect but what I've done now is I've incorporated four clips four video clips here this is very reminiscent of the new style of video editing programs that are coming out now where you no longer really get a storyboard view anymore and the timeline looks like a bit of a storyboard view just kind of uh, extended out a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control A and I'm going to get rid of all these here and we're going to go ahead and delete these. Now, when you want to add any photos or videos, this icon right here is what you would use. I'm going to select all of them right now. I have four video clips. I'm going to select Open, and it sticks all of these in here right now. The other thing that you can do, if you want to make a quick movie, you can go to the Home tab and select Auto Movie. So when you do that, use Auto Movie. It gives you the little wizard here. You select OK and then close and then it gives you a title here and at the very end it gives you an ending. Now these are just generic. You, have, you would have to go in here and you would have to edit the text by clicking on this piece here. Then if you look up in your ribbon bar you can select format and then you can edit your text instead of my movie you can put whatever it is that you want to put in there. And at the very end they have generically put in the the end marker in here and we can go ahead and pull that over here and you can kind of see the end and if you wanted to edit that you would just do that with edit. You can change the transparency of the text here and you can change the background color so if you didn't want that background color you could pick a different background color. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the video portions of this. Let's look at the first clip I have up here. Now if you brought a clip in and let's say you didn't want the very front portion of it or the very rear portion of the video. There's a couple ways that you can do this. Using the video tools, the yellow group here, and you click edit, you can select the trim tool. And what the trim tool allows you to do is go in there, watch your video, and then select what you don't want here in the front and what you don't want in there in the end. And then that'll go ahead and trim it for you. I'm going to hit cancel that. The next piece that you can do is you could actually watch your video in the playhead right here. You could go to where you want to trim it and then you could se select set start point and then you would go through the entire clip until you found the very end part that you wanted and then you would select set end point. So there's another way that you can do that. I'm going to hit control Z a couple times and it's going to take me back. The last piece which most of the old school people like to do is they like to go over to where they want to split the clip and you can either select split clip here or some people like to go over hit the right mouse button and click split. Now if I wanted to let's say get rid of this clip I would just hit the delete key and it deletes that clip. So anywhere that you wanted to delete a portion of this, let's say you were watching the video and then somebody might have said something inappropriate, you would take the little line here and go to the point right before they said it and you would hit split and then you would go here and you'd select the very point after they said it, you would hit split again so you've split it in front of the part that you want to get rid of and you split it behind the part that you wanted to get rid of you click on that video clip and you hit delete and that will delete that so that's one way of doing that I'm going to do a lot of control Z's and I'm going to get this back to where it was and there's our original video clip again now 
in between the video clips right here, you can see the video clip ends because you have the little sprockets here. You have the video clips there, and they're ending. The thing that you can do is you can go over now if you want to look at the animations, and you can see that there are different types of animations, and when these are live, and you can look at, okay, this is the transition that I want between clips. So between the black part and the actual video clip here, I want it to pixelate, or I want it to pixelate larger, or I want a circle. These are all the transitions that you can use. Now there's a lot of cheesy ones, but uh, be careful which ones you use because it will make your video look fairly amateurish. You can always use just the plain crossfade that's in there. A lot of people just use the plain crossfade that's in there and it'll just crossfade between two. Now, after that, we have the actual video effects themselves. If you click on this tab right here, you can give your video a different look. You can give it that sepia look right here. You can give it the black and white or infrared looks or the posterized or even like this uh, different edge detection type. So there's a bunch of those. If you hit the down arrow, these are all live. This one is kind of unusual because it spins the video. Now, I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to do that, but it will spin the video. Now, this is where you could go in there. Maybe if your video is a little bit dark, you could go in there and you could adjust the brightness of this. Now, some of the people have asked me, how do I add my music to this? Now, you can see here in the green part that I do have a piece of music there. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to remove all the music here, and I'm going to show you how to add music. So we go back to the Home tab, and then you can also see that there is one that says Add Music. So I'm going to select Add Music right here, and I'm just going to pick something out of the standard Windows library here. I'm going to select Open, and you can see it added the entire uh, the music to the entire video clip, if you can see that. Now, someone also asked, well, I want to add a different piece of music as it's going through. I don't just don't want one song going through the entire thing. Well, let me go ahead and move this dial over until I find where I want it. And let's say we had an area right here where we wanted to add a different song. Well, you could click Add Music, and then you want to add music from that point on, which is add music at the current point. You click that and we'll select something different. And I'll select distance there and select open. As you can see the song changes. We have one song here and then it begins with a different song. Now this is going to be a very abrupt change from one song to another song. So what we're going to want to do is make sure that this is selected and then under the music tool options. You can see that there's another tab up there now. You can click on the music tool options. We want to make sure that we fade this out. You can do a medium or a slow fade. And then when we click on this new one right here, you would want to make sure that that one faded in. So as this song is ending, and because of copyright purposes, I don't want to actually play it. But as this is going on, this song is going to fade out, and this song is going to fade in. And that's as easy as that. Now, maybe the music is a little overpowering. This is where you could go in and change the volume of the music. There's one last thing that you can do here is, is that if you have some dialogue going on, somebody's talking, and you have a little bit of music in the background, there is the option of going in changing that information. So let's go ahead and see where it's at. I can't really remember where it's at, so let's take a look at this really quick. Oh, there it is. If you click on this, the video timeline right here, you can see that there's one that says Audio Mix. When you click it, it shows you how much of the audio is coming from the video and how much audio is coming from the actual song that you chose. So if you selected this and drove this little slider bar all the way to the side, you're going to hear the music, but you're not going to hear the dialogue very well. If you slide it all the way to the left, you're going to hear a lot of the dialogue, and you're not going to hear very much of the music. It's just going to play very softly in the background. And this is pretty much how you change the audio strength of the music that is playing. 
Of course, if for some reason you took a uh, video using your camera and for some reason you turned it to the wrong side, you could go ahead and correct this. This is mainly for pictures, but you could also do this with videos if you wanted to. Uh, I would just do it with a video clip. Now finally, if you wanted to add more captions, you could add a caption to a video. Maybe you wanted to put somebody's name on there. You could add a caption to this and then put their name there. So I'm just going to type in name. So you could add captions to your video right there. And of course you could change the font and the colors as well. The last thing that we're going to show you right now is you notice that there's these black bars above and below my video. It's because I shot this with a Nikon digital SLR and it was on widescreen mode. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to go back to the home tab and we're going to have to change this from the widescreen uh, from the standard screen to the widescreen. And uh, I guess I uh, didn't do the right thing because I'm on the wrong tab. And uh, I've actually lost the tab. There it is. It's in the view tab. Sorry about that. And you look in here under the view tab and then the aspect ratio right now is on standard. And we want to change that to widescreen. And as you can see, that's going to remove the black bars from the top and bottom. So there is Windows Live Movie Maker. Now you may have some questions. You can go ahead and post them on the bottom of the video if you have anything that you want to ask me. But that's pretty much how you do it. There's a couple ways to do it. If you want to, the first thing that you want to do, if you want to make an auto movie out of this just to see how it goes, that's kind of an easy place to start. And then you could go and start trimming this here. These are the options for your sharing. You can upload this straight to YouTube. I don't necessarily recommend that because I like to go in here and I like to change some of the options. Now I'm going to save this one. I'd probably save it out as a 720p. Uh, 1080p is good but they are very very large. So 720p is usually pretty good. It's a 1280 by 720 and that gives you the ability to have high definition YouTube videos. So this is Chucky from Digital Goulash. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up on this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment area. Take care.